Here is a recruitment example of HR Analytics in Excel. You can see that we've got recruitment data that we might pull from an HRIS through a query. And you'll see uh, the types of fields we might have are number of applicants, number of interviews, number of offers. And uh, we're looking at this and we'll analyze results for this uh, for different types of recruiting sources, social media, referrals, walk-ins, and newspapers. So we want to compare these different recruitment sources uh, for their effectiveness. And uh, what we'll do then is use that historical data uh, to build a model to forecast in the future and see how changes can be made. Here we're starting with a, a calculation of cost per interview and we're uh, calculating the cost per interview by dividing the total cost for recruiting for each source by the number of interviewees. You can see that I uh, type that in and then do a copy and paste and Excel adjusts those cell numbers accordingly uh, very nicely. It makes it convenient. Here we're doing cost per hire. Here we calculate the cost per hire by dividing the total cost for recruiting uh, by the number of hires. And again, you might need to pause or rewind. You can look uh, up into the cell area where it's typing in what I'm doing. Um, here we're calculating percent offers by dividing the number of offers extended to candidates for each source by the number of interviews. Uh, again, uh, you can see I'm typing that in and then cutting and pasting and Excel adjusts the formula accordingly very nicely. Here's the yield ratio uh, next and this is uh, very important for us to consider. Um, here we're dividing the number of hires by the number of interviewee interviews. So uh, how many hires do the interviews yield? What are our efforts yielding? Uh, and here you can we do that by each source. Uh, and I show you that how you can calculate that. Uh, total performance uh, is the next thing that we're calculating. And here we're multiplying the number of hires by the average performance. And this may be uh, the per, uh, performance review uh, that is put into the HRIS. Here we can see an advantage of doing that is that we can actually assess things for how they're affecting job performance, which can be very useful. Um, the next thing we're doing is the probability of quitting. Here's an estimate of quitting probability. Uh, we divide the number of quits by the number of hires. Okay, uh, And you can see the cells that I used in that. And uh, putting things into Excel is fairly easy. What we're talking about here is largely arithmetic simple calculations and if we know you know which how to put those formulas into excel like this uh, we can do a lot of different kinds of analyses and so here we see what we're doing is where we've analyzed the current data and we want to think okay how are we going to do something in the future in this Next, what we're going to do is use this data to uh, project into the future and forecast uh, what uh, our recruiting results would look like if we ch made some changes in uh, the sources that we used and how we use them. So we pull out one of our variables, the number of interviews from uh, last year, and then we start up a framework for the results. And uh, we're going to base those uh, on uh, these numbers here, uh, but then later we're going to change these numbers. Okay, so you'll see as we go forward, we start with the number of offers, um, and here we multiply the number of offers uh, by the, uh, uh, the percent of offers received last year. And uh, after we calculate that, we can uh, then um, cut and paste and uh, put that formula into those other cells. We can double check and it should replicate this uh, initial data 
again once we change the data it will change here we're doing quits in one year and uh, here we're multiplying the number of hires by the probability of quitting last year uh, and again uh, we use the number of interviews uh, here and the results uh, that should be consistent and then uh, once we've calculated that we cut and paste and again uh, we can validate and see that that's the same as our original uh, year one or, or data or and here uh, next what we're doing is uh, making uh, totals for our uh, the original data and then what is in the forecasted model that we calculate and so here we're looking at uh, the number of interviews and summing them across all the different sources and uh, we do that for both the actual and the forecasted as you can see and uh, it's a simple command where we type in the equal sign and then sum and in parentheses we put the uh, cells that we want to sum and uh, and then make sure at the end you do the closed parentheses on this and uh, there's a pattern to this that you you'll see and, and learn and uh, again this data corresponds to uh, data that's uh, in the exercise and so hopefully this video complements the instructions there and, and helps you get through this so here we're looking at the uh, total number of offers that uh, are uh, being uh, made and again this is using that sum command that we talked about and uh, we do it in the uh, original data and you'll see that those cell numbers are, are from that those cells at the top and uh, here in the forecasted data we're using the cells uh, from what we, is called the planned interview strategy okay and so we can uh, get our um, sums from that uh, and here you can see I made a little mistake and went back and corrected it and you know sometimes that's how it is in uh, Excel sometimes you're clunking around some of you maybe this is second nature I think uh, many of us are in different places in our use of Excel I'm certainly uh, still always learning uh, and uh, so uh, this uh, type of exercise I think is very useful for us again um, we'll see as we go in here um, don't um, think that the redundancy in the numbers is an error it's actually good um, because what we're going to do again is is make some changes in one of these tables above and that's going to change our forecast um, but by having these columns uh, be the same we know that uh, the formulas are actually uh, being written as they should be uh, and and this corresponds with the exercise that you're doing in this week's module so um, it's a it's a good kind of test if you're on the right track in terms of uh, calculating each of those cells and again you can see how I'm using the sum command uh, to to get this and in this video shows you summarizes um, how to do that uh, hopefully uh, useful to you um, again these commands uh, are not difficult to use and there's many many videos out there on using Microsoft Excel uh, if you look at Microsoft's uh, instructional material it's very robust uh, and if you go to YouTube uh, there's many videos uh, I think better than <laughs> this one uh, uh, this is just specifically tied to uh, another exercise so that's kind of useful and um, but uh, you can see here uh, we're just um, doing the uh, totals here I'm using the average command rather than the sum command uh, and so I'm averaging the total performance uh, in our uh, original data and then uh, in that row that's listed above in our forecasted data uh, and again that forecasted data will change as we change uh, the use of different sources and you'll see that 
uh, just a little bit in this video. Uh, again, this average command looks like the sum command. It's you put in the command here, average, and then a parentheses, and you list the cells where you want to average those numbers from. Uh, and uh, so it's a, a very useful kind of command that's an arithmetic average. Uh, here we're looking at the yield ratio. And uh, when we're doing this calculation, we're calculating that from uh, this uh, table that we're in. You can see we're taking the number of hires uh, and uh, dividing it by the number of interviews. And uh, then we do that again uh, within this table for the forecasted data. And you can see how Excel shades in those cells being used in the formula. That's also a nice way to check uh, whether you're getting the right variables listed in your algorithm. Uh, here we're using the sum command again to look at total cost, and we're just looking at the total cost for all those different sources in our original data, and then also in the total costs for the forecasted data. And uh, you'll see as we make adjustments to the parameters in the forecasted model in just a minute here, you'll see how these change. Um, but as, if you're doing the exercise, uh, when I'm sorry, when you're doing the assignment uh, for uh, this week, um, please note again that the similarity in these different columns is anticipated and, and a good sign that you've entered things correctly. Uh, and uh, the exercise parallels this one. Here we're looking at costs per hire uh, by dividing the total cost for recruiting uh, by the number of hires. And again, uh, when we're doing that here, we're using this data uh, in this uh, comparison area. And uh, this is uh, useful again for us to make these comparisons. So now we've got it completed. And again, it looks like we've got the same answer twice in our forecasted model, but we haven't changed our forecasted model yet. And, and so what we're going to do is uh, to do that uh, in, in here uh, by changing these different interview strategies uh, by recruitment source. Uh, again, what's here now is listed from the original uh, data. And, and we can look at our results from the original data and look where we had a low yield ratio. Um, for example, in the newspaper, um, that's not really great if we're having a low yield ratio. Um, and uh, we can also uh, may have trouble using newspapers because uh, the, the, our target um, recruits may not be using them very much. Um, so what we can do, as you can see, is make changes uh, in the data. And when we do that uh, and use social media more and use referrals more, we can see that uh, we uh, have a, a little reduction in cost. We have an increase in average performance. Uh, and and that's uh, an improvement. Uh, so I hope this is useful to you.